people that'll be your best friend till the very end. And we are now a toy unboxing channel. We're here to talk about all things Hot Wheels, Furbies, and cybernetic co-parenting murder dolls. Mr. Nick, do you see yourself adding one to your shelves? Honestly, it's, it's like, crack for me i fucking love it i can't go wrong like it's blumhouse blumhouse has been coming out with some fantastic films i've been really excited from everything they've been coming out with lately uh, um, you know I, mean? <laughs> I don't know if everything yes. you've been happy with blumhouse recently but for the most well, part you're a blumhouse okay. man halloween ends was dog shit but okay let's let's uh, let's pause on halloween ends everything previous to that was pretty cool megan was kind of surprising I, I just got the chance to watch it over the last uh few days and it's very straightforward i mean it's got a lot of really cool horror alumni it's so easy to digest like you just start out with a tragedy and then it has this little girl who it's like hey we'll we'll give you a best friend to the end and this is megan and it's like ah, i know this is gonna happen but it's like you know it is sit back and enjoy it it's fun it's very fun when I was watching this, I think my mind went to uh, back to Pearl where I was like, okay, I'm gonna pause this at the 30 minute mark because I don't want this to go the way I know it's gonna go because Megan's kind of cool, man. It's like, she has the dead eyes, like the soulless evil is there, but you're like, okay, if I like put some sunglasses on her, like if I, as long as I don't make direct eye contact, I could live with a Megan like the features outweigh the negatives until you think about it for more than 10 seconds. You're like, oh, yeah, this is a horrible mistake uh, with Chucky. I'm going to toss it back to you because I'm assuming you're the one guy that would own probably multiple Chucky figurines and whatnot. I see a good guy and I'm like, who in the hell wants to have that in their house? It was like a female Chucky. Like, I know we have, you know, Jennifer Tilly as the bride. I mean, we, we already have a, a Tiffany, but it's like they do a really good job at separating it from like what you would consider like a Chucky from the, you know, walk the night dance and the sassiness and the ability to have so much interconnection and have so much growth and depth is very different from like a normal Chucky. Chucky is literally just a slasher film. This is a little bit more advanced, even though it's like now it's like the satirical like hey the devices are alive and they're all listening to you all the time so it plays a lot on those fears that's modern horror now it's it's not about like a killer in the closet it's about the killer that's watching you through your phone while you're taking a shower i don't know why you'd prop it up like that i'm sure it's like sitting right there just so you get out of the shower and you're like yeah it's very easy to be like technology bad and not really add more to it than that and i'm not going to say that this film was like the new Blade Runner. It's like it's not hitting you with any hard. It's not. It's not doing any hard questioning of the future. We have this opening shot of where they're going through the facility, the Google S campus of like they're playing race cars and they're developing. Like it's so lame, but at the same time, once when we have the Megan uh, corporate meetings where they're kind of showing off what she can do with the demos, there is this magic where you're like, I can see why someone would spend ten thousand dollars on it. And when we go back to our uh, smaller lead actress, their bond that they have is very believable. One, because she's a great actor. And two, because Megan does have a genuine interest in her. So they do this whole Disney thing where they sing songs, very nurturing. And again, I wanted to stay on that path, but I was glad how well they balanced it because when that switch did happen, again, it was always on the surface of like, clearly this evil doll is gonna do bad things like you mentioned there's like some rehearsal room scenes like to, real talk like you know going through changes and stuff myself like i i was like it was hard to stay dry eyed in those scenes like child actors in general like don't do a good job and uh, i'll be honest with you she did a phenomenal job to the same nature of like child's play movies like with Andy Barkley, you know, I think they did a really good job at bringing her in and having her do it. And then like, you have the aunt who's just being segued into this situation. Uh, Allison Williams, uh, another horror alumni. She is actually uh, the girlfriend from Get Out from Jordan Peele. It's like you had this really silly concept of a doll killing people. And it's like, you have really good actors and you have really good situations that support that. A, a motto in Silicon Valley is just like, it's just break everything. It, like it sounds cool on paper, like Steve Jobs 
break everything. And someone might, might watch this film and be like, well, oh, that's stupid. Why would they build a robot that doesn't understand death or, or has parameters? It's like, that's such a real life Silicon Valley thing. You have Tesla's going off cliffs because it's like, I don't know, we'll, figure, we'll, we'll patch that in later. So it's, it's not out of reason that this Megan doll would be like, listen, we can fix it in a year. Or we can start selling these things next week so what do you want to yeah. do they just do such a good job of making this product this megan doll seem viable and ma making a gemma the aunt not seem like a lunatic it's like you can see obviously how this is going to go wrong but again through the silicon valley mentality it's like this is in line with someone who would be working in that field and like how they would be thinking about it. it's like we'll get to it. we'll fix it what's the worst that could go wrong this film flies by i think it's just 90 minutes i i would critique it for the fact that it probably could have used a couple minutes and what i wish they would have added is some gore but did you feel your your, your bloodlust satisfied in this film no to be honest with you and, and it's like it does a good job at like implied horror where it's like you kind of get the idea of what's going on it wasn't until about maybe 30 minutes in when we had our first couple of scenes where i'm like this is not rated r i did not know that and um does it does it go against it probably not to be honest with you like it didn't make me not enjoy it like they do use some practical effects and they do a really good job at the stuff that was done obviously not by any means like rated r movie but it's enough for any audience member to be like, ooh, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, so I, I feel like they did a good job at solidifying like this is a horror movie and it is going to be gory, but they don't they don't necessarily give you that full blown like terrifier effect. Obviously, <laughs> you know, it's like nothing like that. Different ball game, uh, a different sport. <laughs> That's a different, that's a review for another day. So, <laughs> With everything as far as like what I was expecting, I mean, my whole thing that even got me to go want to see this in the theater was all the TikToks, all the things. I saw uh, Jason Blum for one of his events. He was dressed as Megan. I'm like, that's terrifying. If it's anything like that, I'll be there day one. They are doing a recut or at least a, a probably a Blu-ray unrated version. And that's definitely going to be an instant buy for me the blu-ray might be a five out of five but for me right now this is a four to five but it's a damn strong four to five when i saw like malignant the when that came out i i i was just edge of my seat and i i didn't i, I don't realize that it's the same you know writer director you know i didn't realize that um knowing that is probably why i i left the theater so happy i i enjoyed it a lot i i was super happy with it my nitpick would be the rated R, um, but didn't it didn't make me not enjoy the movie? And they didn't do it. They, they it did enough where it created enough value behind the characters to just overwhelm that. And then the sassiness of the doll, like just the the great acting, the good movements, the crazy scenes, like uh, four out of five stars for sure. I, I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend to horror fans. Get your tent, get your lawn chair, because those things are going to be selling out day one. Nick already has like three on pre-order. If you're not in line right now, they're gone. But you know what's not gone? Us, except for we are because the video is over. So please make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all the things. Nick's with that motto. Blood, gut, spit, and ass, that's how we roll.